Hello and welcome to the episode 167 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we have a historical Last Mercy Beach showcase, the first appearance of the Beatles on Top of the Pops, and the remake of Here, There and Everywhere. 16th of June 1960, the Silver Beatles, now drummerless, performed as a quartet for their third Thursday in a row at the Institute in Neston, England. Despite the lack of a drummer, it seems the night proceeded without incidents. The Silver Beatles were George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, having acquired Pete Bass on drums and with Paul McCartney now on bass, performed yet another night at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany. In 1962, the same lineup of the band performed an evening concert at the Carbon Club in Liverpool. Opinions differ on whether the band also played a lunchtime gig on this same day, with Beatles historian Mark Lewison claiming they did, and Beatlesbible.com stating they didn't. One thing is sure, on the 16th of June 1963, at the Odeon Cinema in Romford, the Beatles played two shows for the last of the Mercy Beat Showcase concert series. Details on the series can be gathered by listening to episode 66 of What A Fab Day. In fact, there were five more nights planned in June, but Beatles manager and NEMS boss Brian Epstein decided to cancel them. The night was perhaps historical, because three of the performing acts, the Beatles, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, and Jerry and the Pacemakers, occupied numbers 1, 2 and 3, respectively, in the UK singles chart. The evening bill was rounded up by the Vikings with Michael London. For the last live appearance in this episode, we have the second straight night of the Beatles at the Festival Hall in Melbourne, Australia, for the band's 1964 war tour. Finally reunited with Ringo Starr after his hospitalization, the Fabs performed I Saw Her Standing There, I Want to Hold Your Hand, You Can't Do That, Oh My Loving, She Loves You, Till There Was You, Roll Over Beethoven, Can't Buy Me Love, This Boy, and Long Tall Sally. Before going into the second half of the episode, Oh, but you already know what I'm going to say. That's right, www.simonmas.com support to find out what you can do to make me feel that you care about what I'm doing. Think about it, help me, and I'll be able to put together more music-related content you can enjoy. Make the difference, be fab. Thank you! 1965 on the 16th of June, the Beatles were at the Twickenham Film Studios in London for more post-sync work on Help, completing all of their parts for their second feature film, re-recording dialogues and sound effects. In the evening, at about 8 pm, John Lennon was at the NAMS Enterprises office in London to be interviewed by Wilfred Dayat for BBC's The World of Books show of the 3rd of July, aired between 10.10 and 10.40 pm. It was an unusually long interview, 15 minutes long, 12 of which were broadcast. Later in the evening, John met BBC's Tim Matthews recording another interview. This time, it was broadcast during today, on the 21st of June, between 7.15 and 7.45 am, and repeated in the 8.15 to 8.40 am edition. With his second book, A Spaniard in the Works, due to come out on the 24th of June, John had to start pushing it, in addition to do publicity for the Beatles' work. One year later, in 1966, the working day began when the Beatles arrived at the BBC Television Centre in London at 2.30 pm for the camera rehearsals for their first and only live appearance on Top of the Pops. The show had become the pop music TV show in Britain since its inception a couple of years before, but the Beatles had not appeared live in it so far. 
as we have seen in episode 164 of this very podcast, it took a written plea from the show producer, Johnny Stewart, to convince the Fab Four to show up. Anyhow, after three rehearsals, press interviews and photographs, the live show began at 7.30 pm, with the Beatles appearing last, miming Rain and Paperback Writer, closing the program at 8 pm. Immediately after the show, the band moved to the EMI Studios in Abbey Road for a recording session that was booked from 7 pm. They probably arrived at around 8.30 pm and went straight on working on Here, There and Everywhere. The Beatles recorded a remake of the rhythm track completed in 9 takes, numbered 5 to 13, and featuring Paul McCartney on Epiphone Casino, George Harrison on Rickenbacker Electric 12 string, and Ringo Starr on drums. Once take 13 was chosen as the best one for further work, Paul overdubbed his bass part, and John, Paul and George added vocal harmonies. The session was concluded at 3.30 am, after a reduction mix created take 14. Two years down the line, in 1968, Paul McCartney was at Stonebridge House in Middlesex to record a TV program made to be broadcast in the United States. The program, featuring a live British audience, was hosted by David Frost and was basically a way of introducing two of the guests to the American public. The guests were comedian Frankie Howard and Apple's Mary Hopkin. The program was first aired as David Frost presents Frankie Howard on the 23rd of February 1969 between 6 and 7 pm Eastern Standard Time. And with this, we can close today's show. Tomorrow we'll follow the Fab Four as they complete yesterday and here, there and everywhere. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.